Welcome back guys. So in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make two different styles of 16 inch snowflake for less than a dollar a piece. Yes, you heard me less than one buck a piece. I can get two of these out of one fence picket. The big box stores are charging over $60 a piece for. For this style, another 16 inch snowflake, 25 to $30 a piece, but I can get three of these out of one $2 fence picket. So for around 70 cents, I can make something that the big box stores are getting $25 a piece out of. And yes, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that these are intricate and time consuming. I'm going to be teaching you how to make a jig to mass produce these. And I actually do a time trial to see how long it takes me to put one together. If you're watching this to run your business, to add to your business, to make money with woodworking, stick around to the end because I'm going to go into more detail about marketing and profit margins for these types of items. So I have a lot to cover with these two builds. So let's go ahead and dive into this video. Okay, so we are going to start with this three for one snowflake. And that's what I'm going to call it because literally we're getting three of these snowflakes out of one fence picket. So while we're cutting our parts out, I'm just going to remind you that I will be putting the cut list in the description for both of these builds. And as always, I will be teaching you step by step how to build these snowflakes. But again, if you are a plans in the hand type of person, I will be putting those in my Etsy shop as well. I'll link that in the description. And while you're there, make sure to check out our Patreon community and our brag board. I get new brags every single day and that is awesome. So if any of you guys out there have something that you are proud of that you want to share with the community, just send it over through the brag board email link. So after cutting three inch and a quarter strips, I'll use that material to cut our parts A and B. Right now I'm cutting the boards A and these are 12 inches long. The parts B will be the diamonds, and yes, they look complicated, but they are super simple to cut. Using the same one and a quarter inch wide material, we will set our miter saw to 50 degrees. After you make your first cut, you just slide your board down two inches and make another 50 degree cut. This will actually give us a three and a half inch diamond based on these angles. It's almost an illusion because you're taking this flat board and just popping this diamond off. It reminds me of that trick that I used to do, you know, whenever I was a kid that I made it look like my thumb was popping right off of my hand, freaked everybody out, and I still have it. Okay, so maybe I don't, but I can cut diamonds. So we're just gonna continue sliding our board down two inches at a time until all of our diamonds are cut. And then back to the table saw to rip down our leftover piece to five eighths inch. And this is what we'll use for our wings or part C. And what you're seeing me do there is actually mark my miter saw at two and one quarters of an inch past the blade. Since I'll be making several of these wings, that's all that I have to do now is advance my material two and one quarters of an inch to my mark and repeat the cuts. And I'll have my miter saw set up at 45 degrees for both of these end cuts. And now I have all of my parts cut for actually all three snowflakes. And that didn't take any time at all. And you know me, I like to lay my parts out into kits. And whenever I say a kit for this build, I'm talking about these arms. So we're gonna start out by attaching our diamonds to the ends of each one of these boards A. Now one thing that I want you to do is line up the middle of the diamond with the end of the board. And for this first one, I'll just be using wood glue and brad nailing it from the front. And here in a minute, I'll be showing you how to make a jig to brad nail these from the back so you don't have to go in later with wood filler and fill in all these little nail holes. And then we're just going to repeat this with our wings, or part B. And all that I'm doing is lining it up with the top of the diamond. And if you're planning on painting or staining these parts different colors, I would suggest that you do that before you start attaching all of these small parts. And there's the boss, making sure I'm doing everything right. And I guess that I am, or she just ghosted because I mentioned painting. And now it's time to put these arms together. So we'll start with a bottom arm, doesn't matter which one. Put one nail into the very center to attach the bottom to the top. And this is just going to be to hold it until the glue dries. Same thing for the top one. Now for the center design. That's all that we are doing is gluing and brad nailing our leftover diamonds onto the top board with equal spacing. And once that's done, we'll just flip the snowflake over and put an inch and a half screw into the back. This will lock everything together. And it's as simple as that, but it can actually be simpler. Let me show you how to make an easy jig. First, I'm just going to trace all of my parts out onto a piece of cardboard. 
So basically it looks exactly like the arms that we just built. And then we're going to cut out all of our shapes. So we're going to cut out the diamonds and the wings. With these cut out, our actual parts just pop right into place. And we'll repeat this for both sides. And I do not have a template for this because you do not need one. It's literally just tracing parts. And for the template, I'm going to go ahead and add the center design. Yes, I'll only be using this for every third arm, but it's going to come in super handy. That's all I'm doing is marking center and using that as a guide for my first two diamonds. And then we'll simply trace the rest and cut them out. And once you have everything cut out, this is how everything fits in. Yes, it takes a little bit of time to cut all of this out, but if you're making multiples, this thing will be a time saver. I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. And for this snowflake, I'm going to go ahead and pre-stain all of my parts. And I know that you've heard me talk about this stain pad by Makers before. I'm not sponsored by them in any way, but this thing is awesome, especially for small parts. When it comes to staining or painting, I will do anything to make the project faster. And I just stained all 12 of those parts without having to reload my applicator. I'll make sure to throw a link into the description with a promo code. Okay, so I designed this jig to get rid of the nail holes in the front and to also speed up the build process. If you do not want to make this, just make sure to set your nail so that you can fill it in with some wood putty. Has anyone noticed what I'm doing wrong here besides fumbling around with these wings? I put everything in face up. So learn from my mistake and just take the extra half of a second to go ahead and stain the backs of these parts. And then it wouldn't matter which way they went in. But anyway, we'll start by making our two bottom arms. I'm applying the glue to where board A will overlap my parts and I can see that because I've traced it onto my jig. And then we'll just throw in some brad nails from the back. A little extra time well spent. There's no nail holes in the front and once this glue dries all of our parts will be locked into place. And for our top board we will do the exact same thing. And then the final assembly of the three parts will be the exact same as if we were nailing all of this from the front without a jig. And here's just a tip when you're putting on your arms. Center them in between your diamonds. And I know what people are going to say. There's so many different parts it will take forever to build one of these even if you're making it for 70 cents. So let's time it. Let's just hit start and start, 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 start. Whew. That actually took longer than it takes to build one of these snowflakes. But seriously, during this time trial, I'm not trying to be fast so that I can have an honest idea of how much time I have in these. That way I know how much to charge for these. So even with cutting and staining, I can guarantee you it'd take me less than 10 minutes to make one of these. Okay, so let's move on to our next design. I'm going to take a minute to answer a couple of questions about my PPE. People ask me all the time what mask that I wear and what hearing protection. So my mask is an RZ mask that actually connects behind my neck and not my ears. And my hearing protection is by Axel and it's an electronic muff so I can still hear everything that's going on in my shop without damaging my ears. I'll make sure to throw the links to those into the description and some discount codes that they were gracious enough to send to me. And again, for this build, the cut list will be in the description under design two. And I also have plans for this in my Etsy shop. So I've already cut parts A. Now we're working on part B, which is actually going to create the star design in the center. I'm actually going to cut this part just a bit different than we did before. So I have a 20 degree angle on one side and a 50 degree angle on the other. So since I can't just slide the board down like we did before, after I get my first part cut, I'm just going to trace it onto my next part. This keeps from any confusion coming in while we're switching back and forth from 20 degrees to 50 degrees. So to assemble these stars, I'm using CA glue. CA glue can be extremely strong. I mean, you cannot pull this stuff apart, but it's brittle. But it is perfect for using it as a sort of clamp while you're waiting for your wood glue to dry. It is also perfect for whenever you're making prototypes. And that's what you're going to be seeing me build here. It's a prototype. So I'm going to be using CA glue for almost every part of this. But keep in mind, if this was a final project, I would also be putting wood glue in between every joint. So once your star is assembled, line up two of your 20 degree miters into the center of part A. And then I'm going to glue into place and throw some brad nails in. And then I'm going to mark center of all three of my arms. 
and I want to make sure that my second and third arm actually overlap the 20 degree angles. And then I'll glue and put a screw into the center of all three of these, locking everything into place. And then the next step is going to be putting the wings on. And really, the wings should have went on before I attached all three arms. It just would have made it easier to assemble. But that's what prototypes are for. So for cutting the wings or part C, we can do just like we did before and just slide the parts down. Each one of these will be slid down two and a quarter inch, leaving you with a total of a three inch tip to tip. Speaking of tip, if your glue bottle ever gets clogged up because you've left the top off, just twist in a screw and pull out that bottle booger. And now to attach the wings, I'm just measuring up three inches because that's where I want the tip of my miter to meet. And if you are planning on staining this, make sure to remove any excess glue. Dry wood glue will not accept a stain. And really, you could leave it at this point. This is the style that the big box stores are selling, but I wanted to kick it up a notch. So I had some extra diamonds laying around from the previous snowflakes. So since this was a prototype, I just slapped on some CA glue and threw some in the middle. And I loved it. Not bad for a dollar's worth of material. Thank you guys so much for watching. So hopefully by that video, you can see just how easy that it is to make these types of items. So let's say this item that's selling currently for 25 bucks that, you know, we can make from 70 cents to a dollar. I've shown you how to make this, how fast to make this, but why are these stores able to get what they are getting out of these? It is because it looks intricate. So when you first look at this, you may be saying, you know, I don't know how to cut diamonds. I don't know how to make these, you know, odd angles, things like that. But you just saw how easy that it was to actually cut these diamonds out. There's no funky jigs or anything like that. It's just a board on its side. You cut it at the right angle, it's a diamond. Put it all together, you get this. And then you get to charge $25 or, in this case, 60 bucks. Don't charge that much because even though that they are big box stores, they are your competition. The cost of this was a little bit more because I can only get two of these out of a fence picket, which is still pretty awesome to make this for a buck. But I would try selling both of these around the same price. You notice how I have these three, which are the exact same style but just painted different colors. And I've been getting a ton of success stories about our last couple of builds that we have done. The tree, the cheese board, wall plaque. People are selling these things like crazy. I had a guy write me the other day and tell me that they cannot make these fast enough to keep up with the orders. And I had someone else write and tell me the exact same thing on these cheese boards. People are selling these things. The spiral tree, like the one in the background. That one, I have been getting comments daily from people that can't make them fast enough. So that is a common theme. I can't make them fast enough. That is a good problem to have. And I think that these snowflakes are going to be the same way. People want that look. They want that authentic handmade look where no two are exactly the same. They're tired of going to the store and picking from a pile of the exact same item and taking it home. People want what other people do not have. That is human nature. And that's where you're going to come in. You're going to throw your twist to it, just like we've talked about, where you are going to paint and stain these up different ways and create different styles, just like I did for this one. Big box stores were already getting $50 and $60 a piece for these, and that is without the diamonds in the middle. So I had some leftover diamonds just laying around from this other build, and then I just kind of placed them inside of this star shape, and I really liked that look. And it created a totally different product with minimal amount of extra work. Just that one thing alone probably increased the value of this by at least five dollars the little things that you can do to make your items stand apart from even the big box stores makes all the difference in the world one of the main points from the business aspect that we focus on on this channel is low cost high profit these two projects will have some of the highest profit margins that you've seen out of any of the builds that we have done so far keep in mind anytime that i say fence picket i really mean any material that you can access for a cheap price if you do pallet wood builds this is a perfect project you don't even have to go out and buy anything if you break down your pallets so i hope that you enjoy this video and you were able to take something away from this video if nothing else just the mindset that if you see an item that you would like to build but it looks too complicated to build that's not always the case this looks complicated to build but you saw how easy it was so take that mindset and apply it to any build that you would like to do 
look at it, break it down, trial, make some prototypes, and then come to your conclusion. Fear of failure is what keeps people from reaching their goals and reaching their dreams, or even getting off the couch to attempt them. This is another example of why you need to get that out of your head. Do not say, I cannot do that. I cannot build that. You don't know if you can until you get out into your garage or get out into your shop or your buddy's garage or wherever and try it. But there is one thing that is for sure. If you let your fear of failure overcome your belief in yourself, then you have already failed because you're too afraid to even attempt it. So get that out of your head. Any negativity needs to go. Your worst critic, the one person that is holding you back the most, is the person that stares you back in the mirror. It's a mindset. You tell yourself that you're going to do it, you do it and you succeed. So for this week's homework, I want you to work on your marketing techniques. And whenever I say that, I'm not just saying like how to sell these, where to sell these things like that. I'm saying presentation of your item. Yes, I could have kept them plain and just whitewashed like the stores do, but I decided that I wanted to add color, shake it up. That is the part of marketing that I'm talking about. So until next time, guys, go out there, get creative with your marketing and make some money. We'll see you. If you are into, if you are into, whatever. The one thing that is for sure is that I cannot get this line out. That's the one thing that's for sure. I cannot speak today. Can't get this back on its hook either.